Loving Father, we truly desire to come up higher. The words that we have sung is truly the sentiment of our heart. We desire to climb up higher in the ladder of sanctification. We are asking your blessing upon us as we are about to open up your word. Please open up our hearts and minds. Please bring a stillness within this building. Help our minds to be concentrated on the truth we're going to hear from heaven. Please, Lord, make deep impressions upon our hearts, impressions that will draw us closer to Jesus and further from this world. Abide with us now, for we ask these things humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Blessed Sabbath. Blessed Sabbath. I just hear yeah, one, one, one person is studying with us. <laughs> Praise God. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to continue um, in our study. Um, at least we have introduced it two weeks back. Last week we touched partially on it. And this week we're going to continue looking at it. Um, in mind, character, and personality, we are told, I believe it's book one, page 53. Inspiration says, now as never before, we need to understand the science of true education. If we fail to understand this, we shall never have a place in God's kingdom. We are never going to have a place in God's kingdom. So inspiration is saying that we need to understand the science of what? Education. Of true education. The science of true education. And if we fail to understand this, she says there is no place for us in God's kingdom. No place. So if you want to enter God's kingdom, what do you need to understand? Science. The science of true education. The science of true education. So what we're going to be looking at is the science of true education. True education. But she says there's a what to it? There's a science to it. There's a science to it. There's a science to true education. Now, I want us to listen to this next quotation. Not new, these are not new quotations to us, but I would, I would repeat a quotation a hundred times. If it means it takes us a hundred times to understand something. And do you know that truth with God? I don't know about you, but God, when God reveals truth, God often reveals truth and then he comes back and he reveals that same truth and then he broadens or he opens up that truth even further. I don't know if you know that that's how God operates. You see this in the book of Daniel chapter 2. A statue, Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, Rome, and then it's the divided states. Daniel 7 is a repetition of Daniel 2, but there's more information on that clay, that little one. And not only that, the judgment scene is added. Daniel 8, repetition of those same empires, but then it gives more information on the judgments. So what I'm saying is that God often, when God teaches, the great master teacher, God himself, when God teaches, God often repeats himself. But whenever he repeats himself, he broadens, gives us a greater, a, a more clearer view of truth. That's how heaven teaches. And that's how I believe we should teach and, and, and learn. Now, she says we need to understand the science of true education. Question, I want to ask a question. The science of true education, I want to ask you a question. Is this here something I can choose to engage in? As a, as a, a salvational issue, the science of true education. I'm asking because someone says, get, yeah, do away with this. Let's, let's get to the meat of, the, of, 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 of what's coming and the crisis question. True education, is it a salvational issue? Yes. How do you know it's a salvational issue? She says you can't have a place in God's kingdom. Now to me that is a clearly indicating that that is a salvational issue. So when we are talking about the science of true education, we are talking about a salvational issue. This is a life and death matter. Life and death. Now, a quotation that goes with this quotation is found in volume 8 of the Testimonies, page 314. Now, someone says, what is all these things he's quoting? We're going to explain it to those who are not familiar. These are the writings of the prophet God has given us, and that prophet's name is Ellen White. Everything that prophet says, 
is in perfect harmony with the Bible. And everything the Bible says is in perfect harmony with that prophet. But we'll explain that another time. But in volume 8, page 8, volume 8, page 314, she says there's a science of Christianity that is to be mastered. Now, what must be mastered? The science of Christianity. Now, you know there's many wonderful things to learn. You might learn it and never master it. Maybe you grow in stuff and you can learn how to grow stuff, but you never master it fine, good, well. But there's some things that it's a life and death matter that you don't just learn it, but you master it. She says there's a science of Christianity that is to be mastered. What is to be mastered? <laughs> it's the science of Christianity. Are you a Christian? I'm asking, are you a Christian? Then what is there to Christianity? What is there to Christianity? A science. Do you know if you don't understand the science of something, you're not going to succeed in that thing. If you don't understand the science of cooking, you might burn the food. Often you might burn it. Or that food might not taste good. Or you might bake something, but you don't understand the science of baking. When you bake it, that thing might come out too hard. I'm saying if we're going to succeed in Christianity, we need to understand the science of Christianity. She never just say understand it, she says it must be mastered. Now question, when something is mastered, I want to ask you something, is there a difference from merely understanding something and mastering something? Yes. Well, what, well, how, how, when somebody masters something, what would, you, what would you say, like how would you describe a man that has mastered something? He can teach it. He, he can teach it? He's got a perfect, he's an expert, he's qualified. <laughs> qualified, expert, he can teach it. Anything else? Someone that has mastered something. Question. When a man has mastered, it, it becomes his own. Question. If a man has mastered cooking, and you come and you tell him something contrary to what he has been seen working, will you be able to convince that man otherwise? If he has mastered it and he's confident in what he's doing, impossible. Do you know why people get shaken here and then everywhere? They have not mastered the science of Christianity or even the truths that God has given and they are shaken left and right. Inspiration says there's a science of Christianity that is to be mastered. A science, she says, much deeper, much broader, much wider than any human science as the heavens or higher than the earth. Question, there's many sciences in the world, but question, the science of Christianity how high is it compared to every other science? What is the comparison with the science of Christianity and the science, every other science, you can name that science. There's no comparison. She says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so is this science, the science of Christianity, higher than every other science. Now I'm saying, if I'm reading quotations like that, you know what I'm gonna, I wanna do? I wanna understand what is the science of Christianity. I want to understand what is the science of true education. Why? I mustn't just understand it. She says we must master it. Master it. So when we talk about uh, true education, another thing for true education, simply put, simply put, is the science of Christianity. True education, science, Christianity, one of the same things. But they have a goal. There's an end result of the science of Christianity. There's an end result of true education. There's a purpose for all of this. Signs of Christianity. Now, I want us to see this quotation before we... I want us to see this quotation, okay? It's working out, thank you, Lord. I want you to see this quotation. This is found in Child Guidance, page 2. 96. Now question, child guidance, this thing's on a, it's moving very slow, child guidance, child guidance, who is this book for? <laughs> it's, 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 it's instruction to parents for who? For children. Now you know what some people do, and they stay away from the book child guidance, they say, well, I'm not a child, or they stay away from messages to young people, I'm not young. Do you know there are gems of truth found in these books? I, I, I tell you, friends. Now, Child Guidance, page 296. Listen to what she says. Now, remember, 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 
We are talking about the science of Christianity, right? Is there anything higher than the science of Christianity? Anything higher than the science of Christianity? I'm asking. Uh, is there anything higher? She says that, uh, she says as the heavens are higher than the earth, so is this science, the science of Christianity, higher than any other science. There's nothing higher than the science of Christianity. Now, I'm saying that what we are studying is only one aspect. As I'm speaking, God's flashing things in my mind. He's telling me why people are failing in, in this Christian walk. They don't understand the science, but he's putting things in my mind now. And he's opening up another avenue. That's that. We're not going to study that. So I want us to look at this avenue. We'll come back and look at this some more later on. Now, I want you to see what she says here. Now, before I read this quotation, let, let's, let's make this thing clear. So the prophet is saying that the science of Christianity is the highest of all science. So question, if it's the highest of all science, then question, can I say then, the science of Christianity or true education is the highest, true education, compared, I'm saying everything in comparison to true education would be like earth and heaven. True education will be as high as heaven, and every other false education will be low as earth. Now I want us to see this. Look at this quotation before we pause and pray and get into our study. It says here in Child Guidance 296, listen to what the woman of God says. Yes, it's to parents for children, but sometimes, you know that when you don't learn a lesson in childhood, you're gonna have to learn it in, in, when you're an adult. What is the first lesson a child inspiration says in education, a child should learn obedience? Do you know some of us, that is a lesson we have not yet learned. And no matter whether you're 30 or 50, we still have to learn that lesson. The lesson of obedience. Now, I want you to see what she says here, child guidance. Child guidance, 296. She says the highest education. What? The what? The highest education. She's going to just say what we just got on the board. That's all she's going to say. She says the highest education is that which will teach our children and youth the science of Christianity. What is the highest education? It's teaching the children and the youth the science of Christianity. The science of Christianity. Now, as I'm saying, as I'm speaking, God has opened up and shown me there's much more, son. And we'll get back. If God wants us back, we're going to study more to this. But this is just one avenue, and we're just going back where we have already started. Now, so she says the highest education is the sign, or the highest education is that which will teach our children and youth the science of Christianity. Now, someone might say, I'm not a child, and I'm not a youth. So please, get past this. Now, we just gave a lesson that if in childhood you don't learn the lesson, then where, where, where else would you learn the lesson? It's going to be a bit more difficult, but you're going to have to learn it in adulthood. Uh, sorry, Sister Smith. Can you give, give Sister the mic? Sister, let's hear you. I never hear you. Oh, you don't have? OK, you're going to have to just speak up. Well, I never hear. Thank you, sister. <laughs> Thank you. So, sister brought out a point that if you're an adult and you're going to be teaching the children and the youth, then by, you cannot teach them that which you do not have yourself. So, it's going to force you to learn it so that you can impart it. But question, if this is a salvation issue which we all agreed, then don't you think adults should also learn this lesson? Do adults have a soul to save? Yes. Now, do you know that the prophet points us to a book in the Bible that she actually says that this book, she says, contains the highest education? A book in, I said, Lord, that, she says that this book, that if this book is studied in our schools and the students are taught this book, she says you are imparting to them the highest of all educations. Then in my mind, I'm linking that to the science of Christianity because that is the highest education. Now I should ask you what book? James. I'm reading James. <laughs> Anyone else on a, a very good book, but not that book. Very good book. Very book. Isaiah, powerful book, not that book. A, a powerful book, more powerful book. You're giving me good books. <laughs> Revel, Revelation is powerful. Watch it. Watch it. She says, the whole of the book of Acts 
should receive careful study. How should we study Acts? Carefully. She continues, it is full of precious instruction. Now, I want you to see what does the prophet say in her mind when she sums up the book of Acts before she tells us the highest education, but when she sums up this book, what does she say that this book is largely made up of? Watch what she says. She says it is full of precious instruction. It records experiences in evangelistic work. Pause. When you talk about the book of Acts, what, what are we talking about? What, 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 what is largely the evangelistic work? Let's put that on the board. So I, I, I'm saying as yet, all I know is the book of Acts contains evangelistic work. That's all I'm seeing so far. She mentions evangelistic work. What book? Acts. Acts. Now listen to what she goes on to say. She says, it is full of precious instruction. It records experiences in evangelistic work, the teaching of which we need in our work today. So she says what the book of Acts is teaching is what we need in our teaching today. Now then she continues. Now what is the context when she says, what is the context when she says the teaching which we need in our work today? What is the context of this in our work as teaching, this is, we, let, let's see what, where, where, what is she referring to. She says, this is a wonderful history. It deals, watch it, with the highest education which the students in our schools are to receive. So when you're talking about the book of Acts, she says that specifically Acts contains evangelistic work, history of evangelistic work, and then she says, the highest, according to what I'm reading, she says it deals with the highest education. So when we are talking about evangelistic work, can you please tell me what kind of education we are dealing with? The highest, the highest education. Highest. 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 <laughs> highest education. Now, you know what she says about the book of Acts? She says if this book is read, it will refresh the mind. You know, when I first read the book of Acts, that's exactly what it done. It refreshed the mind. <laughs> but we keep reading it now. So she mentions that evangelistic work, the book of Acts, contains evangelistic work, and she says it's the highest of education. It is the highest of education. Now, this is from the book. What book am I reading from? Education. Now, this is the last chapter from the book, Education. The very last chapter, this is the conclusion of the matter. And I want you to see what is the conclusion, the end result of education. Now, let me say this, education has a purpose, it has a goal. What is the purpose of education? To bring man back to perfection in which he was originally created. To promote the development of mind, body, and soul that the divine purpose in man's creation might be realized. This, she says, is the object of education. So education is to bring me back to perfection. But when you come to the conclusion of the book, she is showing what does a perfect life look like? What, what is the, pur the purpose of God in re-educating me? Yes, to bring me back to perfection. But how does that look like in reality? In reality. I want you to see what she says. What does perfection, this is the conclusion of education. This is the conclusion of the matter. Let us see what she says. We're gonna pause and pray now. Education 309. She says, in our life year, in our life year, that's on earth. Earthly, sin-stricken, though it is. Now watch it. She says, the greatest joy and the highest education are in service or in service. So inspiration says that the greatest joy and the highest education is in service. In service. That, do you know, if what I am reading is that God, and I'm saying if I'm reading correctly, and we're talking about the Adventist home, every Adventist home should be a home of service. They should have a ministry. Every Adventist home should love to minister now it's interesting, I've mentioned this before. She says the greatest joy and the highest education are in service question. Do you know when you read inspiration, every time you see the word joy, 
Do you know what you'll find that word joy connected with? Service. Paul, the man who served, do you know what's the subtitle? Joyful in service. And then she gives the, she gives the biography of the apostle Paul. So she says, yeah, the greatest joy and the highest education are in service. Question, I'm asking a question. Is evangelistic work service? Yes. Is that another word for service? Yes. yes. And friends, there's many ways to serve. Many ways to serve. So when we are talking about evangelistic work, all we are talking about is service. Education 103. She says, all heaven and all earth declare that the great law of life is the law of service. If you want to love, you must serve. Do you know that the Father serves? All living creatures. The Son serves. The Spirit is, is ministering, serving. The angels are serving. All heaven is serving. It is the law of life. There's one being who is living for himself. You know who's that? Lucifer. And everyone who chooses to live for themselves will end up where Lucifer is going to end up. Now, listen to what she continues to say. She says, and in the future state, let's pause there. What's the future state? What is the future state? Heaven. She says, as in the future state, untrammeled by the limitations of sinful humanity in heaven, it is in service in heaven that our greatest joy and our highest education will be found. In heaven, what are we going to be doing in heaven? <laughs> Someone says, oh, I'm just going to be living in heaven for myself. No, beloved. When we enter heaven, we're going to enter into a higher sphere of service. It must begin on this earth. She says, witnessing and ever as we witness learning anew the riches of the glory of this majesty, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So inspiration is teaching that the highest education, highest is found in service. Highest is found in service. Now, I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question. Question. What does the book of Acts teach? Which inside that book has found the highest education? What is it teaching me? What does the prophet say? What is it teaching? She mentions the whole book, she says, is the history of what? Let's go back and see. She says it records in red words the experiences in what work? Evangelistic work. So question, highest education is found in what work? Highest education is found in what work? Evangelistic work. Greatest joy is found in an evangelistic work. Actually, that's what the prophet says, joy. If you want joy, found in evangelistic work. Couples wonder why there's no joy, in, and if they're both Adventists, I'm saying. And they want joy within the home, then what should they do? Minister. Minister. Do you know what the prophet says? I think it's in the book, Ministry of Healing and, and Desire of Ages. She says, those who make the service, what is it, mother? Those who make the, the service of, you, you know it. <laughs> Those who make the service of God supreme yes. will find difficulties and perplexities vanish and a plain part set before their feet. Why in marriages there's perplexities and difficulties? Why are there many perplexities and difficulties? They're not making the service of God supreme in that, in that marriage, in that home. Therefore, there are perplexities. Husband can't speak to wife. Wife can't speak to husband. I say that if they begin to serve, they take up this work of serving, and serving first begins within the home. That's where it first begins, in the home. Now, prophet says, evangel evangelistic work. This is the highest education. Now, I want to ask you a question, evangelistic work. What is your understanding of evangelistic work? Because in this is found the highest education. Teaching people how to engage in this work, this is the end result of education, is that you teach the youth, adults, to enter into service for God. This is the end, end purpose of education. Whether it's in our sanitariums, whether it's in our food factories, whether it's in our schools, you name whatever institution. The end result of that institution is to, when people leave, they are able to serve. They are able to serve. Now, someone says, but is it not just giving information? 
as, 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 as that not the purpose of education, people come and then we impart information, knowledge. Inspiration says truth that is not loved, that is not imparted, loses its life-giving virtue, its life-giving power, and its healing virtue. Ministry of Healing 148. So question, if you are just giving people information, 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 and you never teach them to take that information, whether in medical missionary work, whether in our schools, we just give information and we never teach them how to impart that information, she says the truth will lose its life-giving power and its healing virtue unless we teach them to impart it. It must be taught to be imparted. Do you know that's one of the best ways to keep truth is to give it away. The more you give it, the more it becomes permanent in your mind. People say, how do you teach the Bible? I'm saying, if you keep teaching the same thing over and over and over, guess what happens in your mind? It becomes imprinted. I don't know if, if you take a recipe and you keep using that recipe to make food, do you know sooner or later, if you often use that recipe, a time's gonna come where you can put that recipe down and you can make that food as good as when you were using that recipe, looking at it, I mean. What happens the more you do something, the more it's inscribed in the mind. The more you import it, the more it becomes inscribed in the mind. Now, I wanna pause and pray. Now, question. What should be on your mind now? How do I do what? Why? Someone says, why must I worry about evangelistic work? Because there's a science of true education. It's a life and death matter, salvational issue. And the science of true education, the prophet says, simply put, is the science of Christianity. And she says, concerning the science of Christianity, she says it's the highest of all science. And then the prophet says that the highest of all science, the highest of all education, is evangelistic work, evangelistic work. Now, before I pause and pray and we get into our study, we're gonna pause right now and pray. I wanna ask you a question. How should we do evangelistic work? How should it be done? Now, it's a, it's a broad question. There's many things you can say, but I want to narrow this thing down to the words of the prophet. Sorry? Joy, joy, amen, a joyful service, that is true. Evangelistic work, joy is found in service, that is true. In doing the work, true joy will be found. Yeah, I'm saying how should I, now my old study, my old study. Hmm. Amen, powerful, so okay. So, mother says the book of Acts, study the book of Acts, and true. In the book of Acts, she says the book of Acts reveals to us evangelistic work. Study the book of Acts. That is true. Sorry? The laws of agriculture. Amen, sister? The laws of agriculture. We read that in our devotion. Amen. Now, true, the book of Acts. Now, the book of Acts is broad, and there's many lessons to glean. So if we're going to say the book of Acts, I'm going to say amen, but I want to narrow this thing down. Narrow it down, because the book of Acts is broad. Paul, okay, but I want to narrow this thing down to a book called Evangelism. Question, does the book Evangelism deal with evangelistic work? I want to go to the beginning pages of that book and ask the prophets, under inspiration of God, how do I do evangelistic work? Now, I'm just throwing this out because I'm going to pause and pray, and then we're going to study how to do the work. Watch this. This is from the book Evangelism, page 17. Now I'm saying, question, can you do any better than what God says? No. Is there anyone who can do better than God? Not so. I want you to see what God says. This is God's method. Evangelism, page 17. What is the first word she uses there? Uh, is this the same word we got here, evangelistic work? Is that the exact same word you mentioned just now? She says evangelistic work. Now we study this. Okay, let me not give away. But we studied the science of what? Two studies back. The science of? Soul saving. Now let me tell you, that's where we're going. The science of soul saving. Friends, this thing's a science. It is a science. But in this study, God wants to make it so simple for us. Like I'm saying, to me, this is, like even a child can understand what we're going to study. 
Like if you're going to succeed in the science of soul saving, I believe that what we're going to look at in this study, only one thing we're going to look at, very short, simple study, only one thing. I believe a man might fail on every other subject. I mean, when I say fail, he might not have wonderful talents. He might be... He might not be able to speak as well. He might stutter. I don't care. He might be frail and fickle. But if the man succeeds on this point, that man, I'm going to say, he has learned the ABCs of the science of, of soul saving. Say, so what is that? We're going to look at that. Now let's look at this quotation. She's talking about evangelistic work. Let's see what she says. She says, evangelistic work, what is the first thing you must be acquainted with? The scriptures. So if you're going to succeed in evangelistic work, actually come with me in your Bible to Proverbs 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Come with me to Proverbs the 11 chapter. Now friends, I want to ask you a question. Proverbs 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Are we there? Proverbs the 11 chapter. Question, is there a science to true education? Yes. Is there a science of Christianity? Yes. Is there a science to soul saving? Yes. When someone understands a science, you say that that man is wise. When he understands that science, he is wise. And I want you to see what God says, what one must be in order to win souls. Proverbs 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. He that winneth souls is wise. What does God say that when a man wins a soul, what is it, he says, is an indication that that man is, that woman is? They are wise. They have wisdom. What does that indicate? They understand the signs of soul saving. Now, back to this quotation. Remember, what is able to make us wise unto salvation? Yeah. What is able to make us wise unto salvation? I mean, what makes us wise so that we can be successful soul savers? Sorry? Okay, come with me. Okay, amen, amen. Come with me, come with me to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 3, verse 15. 1 Timothy 3, verse 15. First, did I say First Timothy 3? I'm so sorry. It's 2 Timothy 3, verse 15. 2 Timothy 3, verse 15. It says in 2 Timothy 3, verse 15, it says, and that from a child, Paul saying to Timothy, he says that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee, what is that key word? Wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So question, what makes a man wise? The scriptures. Knowing the scriptures. So if I'm going to understand the science of soul saving, what should I understand? Remember you said that we must, if we're going to succeed in the science of soul saving in evangelistic work, mother, you said Acts. As Acts are part of the scriptures. It's a part of the scriptures. So if we're going to succeed, I'm saying you have to become a diligent student of the word of God. You must study the word of God. And let me say this. Okay, I want to make it simple. Okay, let me not go there. I want to make this very simple. Let me not go there. But she says, hmm, will I be able to remember this quotation? She says, I believe it's in volume eight. Is it in volume eight? Hmm, I cannot see my quotation, yeah? But I think it's in volume eight. If not volume eight, it's somewhere in the testimonies, I believe 118. She says thousands can be won in a simple, humble way. How many can be won? Thousands. You know, how can they be won? In a simple, humble way. Now let someone say that, I, I, I've studied the scriptures, but I, I, I'm, I'm not able to explain them as so-and-so explains them or so-and-so explains them. Hang on, we're going to tell you sometimes. Okay, let me not give it away. But in that quotation, inspiration shows 
I'm saying if you find that quotation and you read that quotation, she shows that well-prepared arguments, well-prepared presentations, she says, are fruitless to bring about conversion. And she says, when a soul can speak of the love of Christ, the love they have for Jesus, as naturally as a whirling speak of the things of the world, she says that unbolts hearts that would stay bolted when well presentations are given. So yes, know the scriptures, but I'm saying, yes, you say, I cannot explain it and so and so and so. Fair enough. But one thing we all can do is, if we know Jesus, we can testify of the love, the experience we have with him. Now, do you know, that's God's grace. We were at a church many years ago, visiting another church. And um, I, we had just came into the church, visiting another church, and a man pointed. Now, I tell you, when I came into the church, don't, talk, don't tell me to speak. Don't even ask me what's my name. Leave me alone. I'm just coming to here, and I'm, coming, I'm going. Actually, I don't even want to go to church, but I'm saying, I, don't even ask me my name. I would like to just sit there and listen. Never like speaking. And the man pointed at me. And he said, I must stand up and give my testimony. <laughs> like he just pointed at me. Like my, my heart started racing. Now, God prepared me for it before he pointed. As I'm hearing people speaking, I said, oh, Lord, if he would point at me, I would testify. But in my mind, I never thought he would point at me. <laughs> and God prepared, like he, he nudged me to say that so he could cause me to say what he wanted me. You know, sometimes that's how God works. And I had to stand up and speak. Unbeknown to me, there was a brother behind he knew me from school. He had seen me in school. We are in the same school. I was a grade higher than him. And he knew all the wrong I was to do. And so as, now by the way, he's not Adventist. He's just visiting the church. His family's Adventist. So he was just visiting and he, see, he said when he saw me, he was shocked. What is this? What is he doing in church? And then he heard me share my testimony. I just shared how God took me off drugs, cigarettes, and I just gave my testimony. And he told me, later on he told me, his conversion took place from that point. He told me later because he started coming to church consistently and he opened up. He said, when you stood up and you spoke your testimony, he said, what, what he has, I want. And God worked on his heart. Well, you're going to meet him. He's coming here Monday. Monday. It's coming Monday. It's coming Monday. Now, I want you to see what she says. Evangelism, page 17. It says evangelistic work opening the scriptures to others. So in, in evangelistic work question, do you have, do, should the scriptures be open? Yeah. Yes, that's what the prophet is saying. You might not be able to perfectly explain every minute detail of doctrine, but at least the scriptures should be open. Then she says, watch it, we are talking about evangelistic work, the highest education, highest form of education. Listen to what she says. Now listen to what she says, evangelistic work, opening the scriptures to others. Then she says, Comforting them. Comforting them. No. What does she say here? Warning. warning. Now there's a difference between comforting and warning. A warning causes a man or a woman to tremble. It causes them to tremble. That, that, that's what a warning does. Inspiration says John the Baptist's message was a message of warning. A startled message of rebuke. Do you know what it done? She says, that same voice, that humble man, actually joined the Baptist's message, humble men to the dust. Brought them, like literally they were, the, the message cut the heart. And she says, it was only because of the message of John the Baptist that the people were prepared to receive Jesus. Now listen to what she says. She says evangelistic work, opening the scriptures to others, warning men and women, warning them of what? She says warning men and women of what is coming upon the world. As to occupy more and still more of the time of God's servants. What should we be doing when, when, when we engage in the evangelistic work? What should we be doing? I, I'm asking based on the, the prophet, based on the blueprint evangelism, ev uh, the book evangelism. Question, when we engage in this work, what are we to do? Warn. Warn of what? Uh, warn of what? What is coming upon the world? I'm saying this is the blueprint. The blueprint says when you engage in the work, you need to warn men and women of what is coming upon this world. 
I tell you, friends, this has always been my method of Bible study is to warn. Because when you warn and people see, they realize, now let me say, why warning? Like someone says, why have you, why have you embraced this because the prophet says, but why warning? Do you know that I'm saying a man can listen to a truth? He can listen to a truth and every fiber of his heart can say amen. Every fiber of his heart can say that this is the truth. But do you know what Satan does when truth is presented? Satan whispers into the ear of that individual that you, that is truth. Satan can say, yes, that is truth. That is Bible. That is in harmony with scripture. But not now. You will obey it, but first, work for another year before you accept that Sabbath. Work for another two months. This is what he does whenever a testing a truth that requires sacrifice, Satan whispers, obey it, but what about this? What about that? First fix these things before you can obey. Now what the warning does, the warning places it, the warning almost blows away that idea of wait another month. Wait another two months, three months, a year. The warning blows that away and says, choose this, choose this day. Choose now whom you will serve. Because when man sees the warning, they realize no time to play. So she says, warning men and women. She says, warning them of what? Of what is coming. Now give me another word for what is coming. What do we call that? Last days. L- last days, but what, 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 will, what is coming? Okay, time of trouble. End time Jesus. End. <laughs> Amen. Wonderful. <laughs> Warning them simply. <laughs> now you can't tell Sunday. They don't know about Sunday law. You evangelistic work. You're just showing them that the world's about to end. That's all. The world's about to end. And you show them what the Bible predicted. Now, question. How much of the time, how much time, should we, should we be engaged in of warning men and women of what is coming? She says it's to occupy more and still more of, of, uh, more, still more of the time of God's servants, warning people. So I'm saying in the evangelistic work, we must warn them. Do you know, I'm saying the warning, when people see the warning, obviously evangelistic work, yes, we can do it without the warning, but I'm saying if you want greater results, Prophet says, combine it with the warning. Because the warning will show people there's no time to play. That's what the, the warning literally places you in a corner and says, choose today. That's what the warning, the warning does. Now, I want to pause and pray. But before I pause and pray, you know I never even start. Huh? This is introduction. And the hour is gone. And this is just introduction. My study is, even now, what I'm about to show you is not even my study. But I'm still trying, remember, I'm catching up from last week. Yeah. Last week, you'll, you, I never even get to my study. You'll know that. Now, but I'm not going to keep us long. We've got an all-night prayer meeting tonight. <laughs> so we'll keep some for tonight. Now, I want to say this. South Africa is in big trouble. Yes. South Africa is in big trouble. Do you know what took place this week? Do, let me, let me, before I show you, I need to pause and pray. But I want to first do what the prophet says, evangelistic work, and then we're going to walk and show you what is most essential. But do you know what, before I tell you what happened this week, do you know that Putin and Xi is coming to South Africa 2023? You know what I'm saying? Putin and Xi, Xi Jinping, China's president, uh, communist China, Xi and, and Putin, are coming to South Africa this very year. Both of them are coming here. Someone says, for what? We're going to explain. Do you know what's taking place? We all come, most of us are coming from Durban. Do you know what's happening in Durban? The very, oh, the very anniversary of Russia invading Ukraine. The very anniversary. Do you know what's happening in Durban? The very city we are coming from. Do you know what's happening in Durban? China, Russia, and South Africa in Durban. Let me not tell you. 
Hey, you, you, you want to know, Tyler? <laughs> yeah, I see you. You're getting up your step. You almost stood up there. You want to know? <laughs> Evangelistic warning. This is, what the, uh, this is what God wants us to present the truth. Now, I want you to see this. Before, before come with me to Revelation 13. I need to pause and pray. Come with me to the, this is still introduction. Revelation 13. Revelation 13. When I saw this, I said, let me go back to World War Three, World War II. I want to see the history. I want to go back to the code. And I want to see, Lord, is there any lessons we can glean to see what is happening today? Because the Bible says the thing that had been is the thing that shall be. And there's no new thing under the sun. Now, there was a great change in World War II. Something brought a great change. Do you know that Hitler could have won? Hitler could have won World War II. But there was a change that took place that turned the tide of the war. Do you know that um, during the Cold War between Russia and the USSR, there was one thing, which I'm going to touch on this one thing, not World War II, but there was one thing that brought a change and placed America above the the USSR, Russia. Russia was combined with other nations under one. And Russia and America, now the Cold War was not a physical fighting. You'll know that, right? The Cold War was not a phys- they were not physically fighting. It was more proxy wars they were having with each other. Because they're both superpowers. They were actually going for to become the, the sole superpower of the world. But there was a change which took place under President. I'm gonna tell you the president might give it away, but we'll explain. And Biden tried the exact same thing and it backfired. I actually did not know Biden was actually trying when he done what he done. I, see, I had not studied the history. So when he done what he done, I could not trace it anywhere. But when I saw Biden doing what he's doing, at least he tried and it failed and backfired against him. I just realized and I asked the Lord, America is about to collapse. Someone says, hang on, brother. Whoa, you, you, how dare you say that? America is about to collapse. You say, what do you mean? Let me say this. The thing that had been is the thing that shall be. And there's no new thing under the sun. Do you know that Russia, everyone thought that Russia is going to cripple. Russia is going to be crippled. The sanctions of America, NATO being supporting Ukraine. Everyone saw Russia collapsing. But do you know that Russia financially has been shown stronger. Every aspect of Russia seemed to be coming stronger and there's one nation that seems to be coming weaker. You know which nation is that? America. Now someone says, I couldn't see America collapse. But what I saw was, question, was there a sole superpower before? In, 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 was there a sole superpower? before when Jesus was born at his first, which, which was the sole superpower when Jesus was born? Rome. Question, did a time come in Rome's existence where Rome was waning as the sole superpower? In order for Constantine to keep his empire and keep Rome as the sole superpower, what did he have to do? Does anybody know the history when, when Rome was collapsing, so to speak, in order to keep his empire, he done something? Yes, he done something. He actually, when it was collapsing, he saw the only way his kingdom is going to continue, it must be united. It was, it was split up between paganism and Christianity. So in order for his kingdom to remain, he must unite pagans with Christianity. So he must enforce a, 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 a decree in which Christianity and paganism can meet. What did he enforce? The venerable day of the sun. So what has been, shall be, we are to see America waning. And in order for a Sunday Lord to come, America's going to realize my only way for, me, for us to stay as the sole superpower. We must make a decree. We must yield and make a decree. Now where are we? Revelation 13. Now I need to pause and pray. Revelation 13. This is Revelation 13. 
I want us to see Revelation chapter 13, verse 3. Revelation 13, verse 3. It says, and I saw, it's talking about the papacy, and I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. Question, when does all the world wander after the beast? At what event do we say the world is wandering? Yes, the deadly wound is healed. That is true. It's at the national, at the Sunday law, becomes universal. It's at the universal Sunday law that we say or we see that all the world now is wandering off to the beast. Now, I want you to see what is the condition of the world just before they wandered. Because now, they are wandering and they're going to utter up words. Now, this is now Sunday law is passed already. Now, they utter up these words. Sunday law is passed and they utter up these words. Yeah, what words they say to the man of sin, the Antichrist, the Pope of Rome. Tell me, what do they say to him that indicates the condition of the world just before the Sunday law? Listen to what they say in verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon. That's the world. They worship in Satan which gave power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, now listen to what they're saying to the beast, who is like unto the beast, who was able to make war with him? Question, what then is the condition? Because if they're saying who was able to make war with him, meaning that there's so-called peace now. So then prior to the so-called peace, which the Sunday law comes to actually introduce peace within the world, what was the condition of the world before Sunday came to introduce peace? What was the condition of the world? There was war. There was war. There was war. The war comes, based on the Bible, the war comes first, and then comes the Sunday law. Now, Daniel chapter 11, by the way, Daniel 11 verses 40 speaks of war between the king of the north and the king of the south. Daniel 11 verse 41 introduces the Sunday law. That's that's Daniel. We we can't study that now. Not my study now. But that's exactly what Daniel says. Daniel 11 40, the king of the north, king of the south at war. Then next verse, verse 41 says, national Sunday law. Many are overthrown. Overthrown means their probation closes and it's the Sunday law that closes our probation. Now, king of the north, king of the south will be at war. Now listen to what the prophet says. That's Daniel 11. Now the prophet mentions nations by name. Tell me what are these nations? Maranatha 174, volume 9, page 14. She says wars, rumors of wars, before we talk about those nations, she says wars and rumors of wars. The destruction by fire flood say clearly that the time of trouble which is to increase until the end is very near at hand. Question. What indicates to me that the time of trouble is very near at hand? What indicates that? Wars and rumors of wars. Now, my question is this, because someone would say to us, there's always been wars and rumors of wars. But question, what war is the prophet specifically mentioning when she speaks of war? Yes, it's broad. We can apply it to many things. But she's going to narrow it down to a specific war. Let's see what war she's referring to. Because she says that wars and rumors of wars are an indication that the time of trouble is very near at hand. Now, what specifically, what war she referring to? Which war, which war she referring to? She says we have no time to lose. The world is stirred with the spirit of war. Question, based on the prophet, how much of the world is going to be stirred with the spirit of war? The whole world. So, the whole, so when we're talking about the war before the National Sunday Law, we're going to see much of the world, they're going to take sides. The world's going to be portal up, divided, choosing sides between the king of the north, king of the south. But question, who gains the victory in Daniel 11, king of the north? comes out victorious. Now, look at this. She says the world is stirred with the spirit of war. Now, where, she draw, where does she draw her mind? She says the prophecies of the 11th of Daniel have almost reached their final fulfillment. Soon, strife amongst the nations. Does she say nation or nations? 
nations plural. She says strife amongst the nations will break out with an intensity that we do not now anticipate. Question, nations, does that include your nation? Yes. Well, are we in South Africa? So question, based on inspiration, someone says, oh, he's in search in South Africa. Hang on. She says nations. And then she says the spirit, the world is started with the spirit of war. Question, is South Africa a part of the world? Is yes. South Africa a nation? Yes. So based on this quotation, I'm seeing South Africa in far there. Now, do you want to know Tyler? <laughs> We're in trouble. Xi and Putin are coming to South Africa, 2023. February, the anniversary of Ukraine's invasion by Russia, something happens in Durban that caused shockwaves throughout the world. I'm telling you, shockwaves that America immediately sent, immediately, immediately, while Lavrov was in South Africa this week that has just gone. You know who's Lavrov? Okay, we don't know who's Lavrov. Lavrov is the minister, the, the foreign minister, ministers of international affairs. He is the one that goes from nation to nation on behalf of Putin. Lavrov, well known, well, well known, all over the news. Whenever there's something to talk about, Lavrov's in the front. He is the spokesman for Putin. Now, immediately Lavrov came this week. He came to South Africa. America sent immediately the had Lavrov was here. The, while the man put his foot in South Africa, immediately America sent, what is this woman's name? I forget her name. No, no, no. There's a, this woman of the financial, she handles the, the treasury aspects, but those who are watching from America will know. Now, immediately as Lavrov put his foot there, they sent her off there. And then our Minister of International Affairs, that woman, tell you, intelligence woman, intelligence woman, I wish, you know what, I wish we could walk through everything. But sometimes it's good just to give you enough. I tell you, South Africa, friends, let me tell you, <laughs> South Africa has placed, hmm, America since I start, I'm telling you what, what's happening in February, America, I'm, I'm now in serious notes, America sends a startling warning. Like every nation on the globe, when they looked at this, they were shocked. How can South Africa do this? It took shockwaves throughout the, the world. That on the, on, the, on the anniversary that South Africa has decided in the very Durban. I told you Durban, not like, I told you Durban is no ordinary city. I told you. When we are studying the introduction of BRICS, we know where, where one of the first meetings of BRICS took place, inside of Durban. Inside of Durban. No ordinary city. Now, question, does this quotation include South Africa? I'm asking a South Africa nation. So when, I, when we talk about war, I must expect South Africa to be a part of it. Watch it. You know, when I looked at this, whenever something happened, like what, I never used to like history in school. Never. Do you know, in order for them to cause us to study Pearl Harbor in school, they had to make us watch a movie. Did they, they, they do that for you too, brother? <laughs> they, they took all of us, the teacher, the history teacher took us all, he put us in one class, all, all his students, he put on Pearl Harbor, he watched the movie. Yeah. Now I, I went back and looked into the history of Pearl Harbor. What he showed me is not the true history of Pearl Harbor. He did not show me the true history. And you know, as I, as I went through this, I'm saying, had I known this, I would have picked up my hand and said, sir, what you're teaching us is wrong. This here is not true history. This is the American version of it. Well, I tell you, America's version, be careful. Now, friends, one and a half hours is gone, almost one and a half hours. You know, I never had pray. So what should I do? I show you the events and I pray, and I never had pray to start. <laughs> we know it starts. And one hour and almost a half is gone. So we're gonna to have to just show you this and let's see how far we can go. Maybe I'm gonna to have to skip this, Tyler. <laughs> One more quotation, she says, 
Maranatha, uh, manuscript releases, volume five, uh, 305. Now listen to what she says. She says, India, China, Russia, America. You know these nations? The prophet says, question, what's gonna take place amongst these nations? What in the blue words? War. And then she says, after the war, what does she say comes after the war? Red words, what does she say after the war is the blue words? Time of trouble. So question, time of trouble, where is that found in the book? Where is that in the Bible? Which, and she quotes it. What, 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 what book and what verse? Uh, Daniel 12 verse what? That's what? So I'm saying after the war, Michael stands up. Daniel 12 verses 1. So after the war, India, China, Russia, and America, Michael stands up. That's Daniel 12 verse 1. So when is the war after Daniel 12, 1 or before Daniel 12, 1 based on the quotation? It's before. So what is before Daniel 12, 1? What chapter is before Daniel 12, 1? Daniel 11. So in Daniel 11, I am to see India, China, Russia, and America. There's somewhere in Daniel chapter 11. But I'm saying in Maranatha, I'm seeing South Africa as well. Why? South Africa is one of the nations of this world. Strife was going to take place. Now, you all ready for this? <laughs> Listen to what it says. 19th of January 2023. 19th of January 2023. South Africa confirms naval drills with Russia and China. This very month it was confirmed that next month Russia and China come, the military come, we're going to show you where they're coming to, to South Africa for military drills in preparation for war. In preparation for war. Now I'm asking, I, 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 I'm just putting my mind, I'm just, if South Africa is saying we are having military, military drills, with Russia and China, you think, quick, think, 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 think. Who does Russia and China see as their enemy? America and NATO. So for South Africa to say we are preparing for war and we're having drills with Russia and China, what does that tell you? Yes. They have made up their mind whose side they're standing on. Don't think we in South Africa, we, we're not a part of Daniel 11 verses 40, 41. The war with the king of the north and king of the south. We've studied that. I'm not going to explain those verses. South Africa has now placed themselves in the forefront. Now, you, you, see, when I, I'm saying, Lord, what is this? The Lord said, history, son. History. Yes. So when they say the financial ministers from America. Yes. Billions. That's what she came for. That's exactly what. Now, I never have time to cut the clips and put the videos in. She came to remind South Africa about the billions that we Americans have lent you. That's what she came. That's why immediately when Lavrov put his foot there, they said, send her, let go, remind them how much they owe us. Friends, you understand what's taking place. America and Russia both have their eyes on South Africa. And America realizes South Africa is key to the continent of Africa. America knows that should South Africa, friends, I looked at the history. There's a reason why South Africa has chosen Russia. See, when I saw this, God said history, son. This is not just South Africa saying, or Cyril Ramaphosa saying, oh, we are siding with Russia. No. Cyril Ramaphosa is just following. Now someone says, who is Cyril? He's the president of South Africa. Cyril Ramaphosa is just following in the steps of Zuma. And Zuma is following the steps of Mbeki. Mbeki is following the step of Nelson Mandela. Say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Nelson Mandela? Yes, Nelson Mandela. Do you know that Putin and Mandela were friends? Now, you, 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 see, you're going to history, you're going to understand something. Why South Africa is choosing Russia? Why they're choosing Ch China? We're going to explain. Do you know that China, I, friends, as I looked at the history, I'm saying, Lord, this thing. I looked at the, this week, I was, I'm saying, I was spending too much time in history, but God is opening up stuff. Do you know that China, their first, 
communist president, I just forget his name now. I forget his name. The first communist president of China. Often, I'm saying like China, every time you see pictures of China, you would see his face. Like his face stands at the head because he was the first communist president in China and then the second president and then China started booming. Do you know who was that man's role model? That first president. Actually, his role model was alive during his time. Stalin. Now, who was Stalin? He was the communist president of Russia, the USSR. He, he, he built China upon the, on the principles of Stalin. He, he, when I looked at the history, he loved Stalin. Wow. And that's why China and Russia have such close ties. Because China is built on the principles of Russia. Now, someone says, now where does South Africa fit in this picture? Where do they fit in it? We're about to show you. Now, listen to this. Do you want to know where the military drills are taking place? It says, watch it. It says, South Africa on Thursday. Thursday, beloved. Thursday confirmed plans to conduct joint military exercises with the Russian and Chinese navies off its east coast next month. Now, do you know what they're calling the drills? Do you know what they're calling it? Operation Mozzie. You know, you know what mo Mozzie means? Smoke. Now, le let me tell you this. Russia and China could be putting smoke for America to come here. Mm. And they got plans other, way, other places. So, like, we could be the next Ukraine in a proxy war. On the opposite end, smoke. You know what smoke means? A smoke, when you, 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 you make a smoke, when you're planning something, smoke screen. Cause people to look here when you're actually planning something there. Watch it. It says the South African National Defense Force said war games were meant to strengthen. The war games were meant to strengthen already the flourishing relations between South Africa, Russia, and China. It is said that the exercise would take place in the port cities of <laughs> Durban and Richards Bay and involved 315, uh, 350 African soldiers. The drills is called Operation what? Muzi, which means, what does it mean? Which means smoke. That's one of the languages, yeah? Smoke. Now watch it, when are these exercises? The exercises, law sentence, are set to run from February 17th to 26th, a year after Russia invaded Ukraine. Watch it. Watch this, friends. Russia, I mean South Africa, to hold Navy drills with Russia and China amid Ukraine war question, is Russia in a war today? When you, as a nation, decide to have military drills with a nation at war, I'm saying, friends, I looked at World War II. It's the, that's a law that when a nation has drills with another nation, they are saying clearly to the world, I am, I'm siding with this nation. There's no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no question about it, whose side South Africa has taken. Friends, I tell you, young people, we're in trouble. And I almost can hear the angels' word resounding. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Watch it. China and, and Russia, this is, listen, China and Russia are bringing their growing military cooperation to which continent? Africa. Africa. Now, do you know why South Africa has chosen Russia? When the treasury minister, so-called, whatever, came and spoke, Lavrov had to give a reminder to South Africa. Yes, you all owe them billions, but he had to give a reminder. Why? Well, how long we are coming together? Watch it. Before I read this, one of us come to Nelson Mandela. You all know Nelson Mandela? First president of the apartheid. Mandela and the Soviet Union, now you know the Soviet Union, USSR, Russia, central to it, 
the struggle against the apartheid. Watch this. Now this came out when Nelson Mandela had, had died. As the world mourns the death of the great statesman, RBTH looks back at the role Russia and the Soviet Union played in the struggle against apartheid. Question. Based on what I'm reading, what did the Soviet Union do? They helped South Africa during apartheid. They helped them. It says when Nelson Mandela turned 95 in July, Russian President Putin gave one of the most glowing tributes, tributes to the great leader. Question. Now I'm not going to read his tribute. He actually praises Mandela for fighting against apartheid. Now, are you seeing the roots of Russia and, and South Africa? Where they're coming from? February last year, it says Russia just reminded, that was last year, just reminded South Africa that it helped fight apartheid in celebrating 30 years of relations. So you know what South Africa feels? We indebt to Russia. He said, he said that, yeah, he said that, he said Russian gave us the, that man is, he's not normal, but he says Russians gave us the weapons to kill. <laughs> Go have mercy on him. But he said that Russians gave us the weapons to kill our opponents. We played that video for you, we showed you one. Now, there's the woman, there she. Now, when you speak, you understand. This is our, our defense um, ministers of uh, international affairs. Now, listen to what America, it says here, the US on red alert. You know what's red alert? Danger, danger. US on red alert as China and Russia vow to unite for huge war games in South Africa. When I took this article, it was five hours ago. Red alert. U.S. concerned as South Africa to hold war games with Russia and China on why are they concerned? On Ukrainian invasion anniversary. Now that sounds, friends, it was not accident that they chose the anniversary of the invasion, that we have the war games on the anniversary. You know what Putin is doing? He's showing America. He tried and cut us off. Not so. We still have many partners. Many partners. And why are they both fighting for South Africa? Both are trying to woo South Africa. As I said, South Africa is the key to Africa. If you want the continent of Africa to stand on your side in a war, make sure you get South Africa. South Africa is the leading nation of Africa. Now, remember a couple of days back, America gave an alert that there's some bombing to take place in Johannesburg? Now, I want you to look at this article. There's a group called the Wagner Group. Have you ever heard of the Wagner Group? You never ever heard of them because it was also new to me. A couple of months ago, I heard of the Wagner Group. This is a military group. It's Putin's own personal military. So there's the military of Russia, and then there's the Wagner group that do Putin's bidding. They're actually above law. There's no law to them. They are law of their own. Now, how did I know about Wagner? There, there was a city in Ukraine that the Russians were trying to overthrow for months. They couldn't do it. So what was decided to withdraw the Russian soldiers and allow the Wagner group to come? Less than a month, Wagner group overthrew the Ukrainians and took hold of that city. Why? They know no law. They are law of themselves. They, there's no law. They can use anything and do everything. A citizen's life means nothing to them. The Wagner group is made up of criminals inside of Russia that are released out of prison to fight for Putin. That's the Wagner group. It is only prisoners. When you take a whole lot of prisoners, you give them guns and you tell them to kill. They kill citizen, they kill soldier. To them, citizen and soldier is the same thing. I want you to see this. 
Now, because of the military drills that are taking place in South Africa, United States have announced that the Wagner Group is now a threat to the international safety. It's a terrorist group. And for South Africa taking part with Russia, they're actually saying that South Africa is uniting with terrorists now. I know you're following their reasoning. In order to get South Africa in a corner, okay, we're gonna announce this group as terrorists, and if you partake in war games, then you are part of the terrorist group. Now, you know America invaded nations because they said that these nations are terrorists. For years, tell you a crisis is brewing. U.S. expresses concern about South Africa's decision to join drills with Russia and China. The White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, did not say what consequences African governments, consequences, African governments who are going to follow in South Africa's steps that work with Russia's Wagner private military company may face in the wake of Washington's decision to designate it as a transnational criminal organization. What have they declared about Russia's military group, the Wagner? They're a criminal organization. You keep reading the article. It says that they are a threat to the international safety, the peace of, of, of nations. I know if you understand what's taking place, friends. Now, who was the Wagner Group? As I said, I'm not going to read this article, but it says US declares Wagner Group a transnational criminal organization. Russian's private military company, the Wagner Group, poses a transcontinental threat, the US, the US Treasury has stated. So what they're saying is that the Wagner Group is a danger to not only America, but they're saying a danger to the whole world. And that any nation that unites or combines whatever unites with them, that nation becomes a threat to America as well. Where South Africa? In the middle. They have chosen their side. Friends, soon strife is going to break out amongst the nation with intensity that we do not now anticipate. Are we prepared for a war to break out here, a proxy war between Russia and China and America taking place on the soil of South Africa? Let us pray and get into our study. I never, in my study, I haven't even started my study. I haven't even started. This year's the Prime Minister, former Prime Minister of Italy. Revelation 13 says, who was able to do what? Make war with the beast, with the Antichrist. Question then, based on that verse, who comes up with the solution for the peace that is threatening the world? The Antichrist, beast. It says, you can see his name, he's the prime, ex-prime minister of, of Italy. It says, names only person with peaceful solution to your Ukraine conflict. This is a prime minister. He says only one person can bring peace to this crisis facing Ukraine and the world. Nobody but the Pope and the Holy See. What date is this? What date is this? January 25th, 2023. A few days back. Only man to bring peace to the current crisis of the world is the Pope of Rome. South Africa, friends, watch it. South Africa holds 2023 presidency in BRICS. You know what that means? That G and Putin Brazilian president and China's pres uh, uh, leader, they all, uh, India, sorry, they all come, converge, all meet in South Africa in 2023. South Africa expects Putin to attend 2023 BRICS summit, ambassador says. Do we understand, friends, where we are standing? Now, let, let's, let's get into our study quickly, half an hour study. Or we pray and we close, but I never even start. We decide. I never even start my study. <laughs> okay, let us pray.
That's Neil. Loving Father, we come before you, Lord, with much humility in our hearts or trembling as we realize a crisis is brewing. Father, truly that the world is truly on a verge of a stupendous crisis, not just South Africa, but the entire world. And Lord, we we want to be prepared to meet the coming storm. Truly, a storm is brewing. We can see the clouds gathering. Everything indicates that Jesus is about to come. Father, I am pleading that you do something special for us. We have looked at the science of true education, and that science is found in the science of Christianity. And that is found in evangelistic work. Father, I just pray that you'd please help every one of us. We have not even begun to study, but for the sake of time, we will conclude and come back. I just pray, Lord, the little that we have learned, may you draw us closer to Jesus. May yeah, we take up this work, Father, this work, this evangelistic work, this work is broad. It does not merely mean standing at a pulpit. It is broad. There's many ways of being engaged in this work. And our work is not greater because we stand at the pulpit or because we do certain things. Every work in the estimation of heaven, if it is done with love, is accepted. Father, we are truly thankful for what you have briefly taught us. You have introduced something to us which we might have not known, that the book of Acts contains the highest education, simply because it teaches this work, this evangelistic work. Father, please help us to become wise, that we might win souls for you. We really desire to become wise, and you have given us the scripture. May we make use of this. You have also given us the medium of prayer, that before we attempt any evangelistic work, no matter what it is, whether it's over the phone, whether it's whatever, before we engage in any work, we ought first to consult with heaven. For you already have the solutions. And like Daniel, what Daniel was in Babylon and Joseph was in Egypt, every seventh that advances is to be to the world. We are to be problem solvers. But Father, we cannot solve any problem without you. You have the solution to all problems. So before we attempt to solve anyone's problem, and the greatest problem to be solved is the problem of sin, we don't have the solution. We know that solution is found in Jesus. He is the remedy for the sin-sick soul. And so, Father, I just pray, may you bless us. Please draw us closer to you. We have not truly studied, Lord, but I believe we can speak to our hearts with the little we have learned. Please bless us, Father, and yeah, help us to be engaged in this work. Time is almost finished. South Africa is placed in a very dangerous position. And Father, we, the crisis could break first for us before it breaks upon the entire world, meaning that we would have to prepare even earlier should a proxy war take place in this country. Please help us, Lord. We love you. We just want to thank you for the lessons you have taught us. Please abide with us and draw us closer to you, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Someday the silver cord will break, and I no more as now shall sing. But all oh, the joy when I shall wake within the I shall see him face to 